All right, welcome to another tutorial. This one's going to be on Firebase Cloud Storage. Uh, so we covered Firestore pretty thoroughly. Firestore is the JSON document storage. Cloud storage is all about files. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over the, just the overview of how it works in the Firebase console. We're going to go over the API in our file repository to see how it's used. And then we're going to add some block events and state to manage some download URLs for our profile image. And then display the image with the um, a network image. Okay, so first let's look at the overview. So here's the documentation, the storage slash usage. And like Firestore, it is a singleton where you have to access it with this dot instance. And what we really want to look at is references. So a reference could be a folder or a file. It's just like a pointer to something within your storage bucket. Uh, when it has slashes in it, that's like slashes like um, in a file system. So if you gave it the path of you know images slash notes, notes would be in a folder called images. Of course, it's not actually an image, but just an example. Um, so here's a better example, you know, images slash default profile picture. So instead of having dot child dot child, you could just put the full path of images slash default profile into the ref if you really wanted to. Um, you can also list everything in the reference, which is actually relatively new. Uh, this API was missing from Flutter for a while, but now it's here, which is great because it's quite, quite useful. Okay, so let's look at the Firebase console here so we can see. So this is the storage part. And what we have here is our top level bucket. So it's just like a bucket of files and you can upload things manually. You can create your own folders manually, but obviously most of this is gonna be done in code. So I've decided to have a folder called profile images and then each user has their own folder as well, and then the file here. Um, so you can set up rules like in Firestore for security, um, and you can match it based on the root to the file. So putting all of a user's stuff in a folder, uh, I think makes a lot of sense because it makes it so that you could potentially make a, um, a security rule that revolves around this folder and say, well, only the user that's logged in with this user ID is able to delete stuff in this file. Maybe other people can read it because you want to be able to see other people's profile pictures, but you can make this so that only them can upload or um, delete stuff like that. So yeah, inside of this, we have a uh, image and this is just the profile image and you can actually view the, the image here and see some metadata. So if you want to, you can add metadata and it'll give you a long lived uh, download link. So the download links in cloud storage are long lived, which means if you put something in here and you have a link, um, that's gonna stay that way for the foreseeable future. So you could cache that or do something like that so you don't need to fetch it again. Uh, that link should be valid for the whole time that the file lives there, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, the, the full path to this image is just profile images slash this folder slash this guy here. So as a, as a design decision for the profile picture, I've decided that this folder for this user should ever only ever hold, host one file and that file is gonna be the profile image. And if we ever upload a new profile image, we're also just gonna delete the old one there so that we don't have uh, the storage just growing and growing and growing because I don't really see a use uh, for having a historical profile images for this particular app. You know, of course on like Facebook, you can see the history of all the different images, so maybe you don't want to delete them, but I'm, I'm going to just to show you the delete API as well. So let's hop into the repository next. So the repository here. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to pick files, right? And now we're going to use those files and actually upload them somewhere. Uh, we're going to upload them to cloud storage. So what we're gonna do is take that cloud storage instance, which we get up here. So I have a function that provides me with a Firebase storage. The reason I do that is so that in main, where I instantiate this, I can create my file repository with this function that goes Firebase Fire Storage dot instance. And I can do this before Firebase is actually initialized. Because if you actually go Firebase Storage dot instance um, immediately before Firebase is initialized, then it's actually going to throw an exception because you have to initialize your app first. Um, so yeah, that's a function that returns me my Firebase um, instance there. And then it's used here and we're gonna look at upload first. So upload's really simple. We just need to get a reference with the dot ref, pass it a folder ID. And this folder ID could have slashes in it which will make multiple folders uh, automatically for you. And then we are going to put a child and then 
put the file the file name and then we're just going to put file um, yeah with the file and that returns us a task snapshot and task snapshot has some useful stuff you can uh, if you would like to pipe out the upload progress you could do that but I, I haven't I've just awaited the entire thing and then return the reference of the new thing that was just created and if it throws then we have the same new exception type with just a message here so let's upload let's look at delete so delete uh, throws an exception if there's nothing at that path so just be aware of that if there was nothing there it, it will throw an exception uh, but all you got to do is pass it a full path which includes like the file name dot extension like the complete path to the file and then call delete and we just await it because delete uh, returns a future void so it doesn't return you anything there next up we get get references in a folder so within a folder there could be multiple references there could be multiple files or there could be another nested folder uh, both of those would be a reference so here this method takes in a folder ID which again could have slashes in it to be actually a nested folder and we get this thing called a list result and a list result has items which are the references and it also has some other stuff on it um, such as a next page token so you are able to paginate this if you want if you if you're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff in your folder uh, that could take a very very long time to get this list of items uh, so just be aware that you might if you're gonna need like more than 10 files or something like that or uh, you might want to put a max amount and then use this next page token to get the next page um, so yeah that list all has an optional way for you to pass in uh, the amount that you actually want to limit it at if you want but I know that there's only gonna be one for the way that I've designed it so uh, I'm just going to return dot items here okay and then we can also get a download URL from a full path so the full path is including the file name and the extension and download URLs are long-lived which means you could save it somewhere and cache it and uh, that link should be valid to get the image still and the reason that we want to use a download URL instead of actually downloading the file is because all we want to do is view the image not actually download it to the phone right so that's a bit different we just want to view it and then if the user kills the app they don't want to have you know a hundred different profile pictures all of a sudden saved on their phone and that app is getting bloated uh, we just want to show a network image so that's what we're going to do uh, to display the images we're going to use this download URL and then we're going to use image.network that that widget okay so we've seen a bit about the cloud storage API so now let's look at its use with our new events for our block so the user block has two new events now and both of them have this getter I could have made a base class and not duplicated this but I didn't really feel like it but anyways we have a user profile image change and um, the load event right so if you change your profile image we're going to dispatch this one and if we just want to load it and when we enter the screen we're going to dispatch this one and both of them have this helper to get the where I expect that image to live um, so profile images images slash user ID and to upload it we need a file and then to load it we don't need anything so in the state I've got a new map of profile image URLs so this is just a um, map of all of the known download links for these images that the app currently knows about so it's a map of string string uh, so string is user ID and string is URL and that's just passed into the, all of the existing boilerplate where there's the constructor and the initial state where we don't know any and the copy with blah 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 okay so let's look at where um, these events are handled so in our users block we have to register the events with the on method so I'm doing that inside of the constructor and we're saying on profile change we're going to do change image handling and then on load we're going to load the image uh, so we're going to look at both of these event handling so first let's look at the change which is basically the upload um, so like the other event handlers in the block it needs the event the current state the emitter to emit a new state and it needs a file repository um, to use the cloud storage there so first thing what we're going to do oh you know I missed a little bit on the um, user state there's also this um, profile image change process here for when you're changing your own profile image it can be loading or errored out process it's just got um, a loading flag an error message and it succeeded with some helpful constructors there 
Okay, Ooh. so we're back here and we are first admitting that our profile image chain is changing. So we're going process.loading and then we're going to first delete the old profile image picture so we only save one per user at a time. So this is just a design choice to, so that I know when I go into that folder of profile images with by, by that user, the first one is going to be the image that I'm going to take and there should only be one at a time. Um, so what we're going to do is every time we upload one, we're just going to first check if there is any already there and if there is, we're going to delete them. So there should normally only be one image if there's any, um, but if there was multiple, it would delete multiple because it's a list here. So we're getting all the references in the folder with my repository method and then for each existing one, we're going to call delete and await the batch of those. So here's the actual upload part. So we upload it with the folder ID and the file that come off of the event. And then we get a download task uh, from that. And the task has a full path of where it saved it. And what we can do is get the download URL from that uh, via that method to get download URL from full path. So then we just put that into our map of URL. So we're going to copy the existing map with map.from, put in our URL via the user ID into the map, and then just admit that it works. So we're going to admit it with a process of succeeded and put that um, map out there onto the new state. And if that fails with any exception, we are just going to um, admit here the process.failed. And this is the raw exception and the raw stack trace, uh, which you probably don't actually want to show your user, but it's quite helpful for development. So you probably want to change this to a debug print and a nicer error message at some point. Okay, now let's go to loading it. So loading it, we likewise have the event, but it's a different event class, the uh, current state, the emitter, and the repository. So what we're going to do is get our references in folder. And we know that those references all live in you profile images slash user ID. <clears throat> so as, as a design choice, we I've said, you know, this should only have one file, which is the profile image. So we're going first or null because there might not have a profile image yet. This user, user happens to, but not all of them will. So if the ref isn't null, what we're going to do is just called get download URL on that reference, right? Because the storage reference has, uh, that's the fire store, sorry, Firebase class, and it has a download URL on it, but it's asynchronous to get it, so we await that. We put it into our map of existing URLs, and then we insert it there via the user ID, and then admit that it worked. And this one, I've decided to make it fail silently because they would just see a default image. So let's go to a user that doesn't have an image. It's just like the empty Facebook sort of thing with the icon there. Um, so if it fails to load, it's not a big deal. It just shows this. So I've decided not to really do any error handling on the loading part of it. <clears throat> okay, so let's go into the UI now and see where these events are dispatched. So let's look at the change one first. So here is in our icon button that we made in the last tutorial and it has to choose a photo. So if we successfully get a photo, meaning a file, what we're going to do is dispatch this event, right? So the users change profile image event with the user.id that is in the screen and then the file that we got. Um, so that pipes it through to the event handling and then eventually uploads it to Fire, uh, Firebase. So let's, let's do that with a user that doesn't have an image yet. Um, camera weird emulator. I like the dog the best. Okay, so let's send that over there. And then we get our image here. So if we go into profile images, we see we now have another user has uploaded one. And if we view it, oh, I think that was the old one. There's the dog. Okay, so that's the uploading it. So when we upload it in that event handler, we also put the download link into the state so that we know where it is. Uh, but let's look at entering this screen, the user profile screen, if you didn't know about that, that image already. So in the init state, I've added another event to dispatch, which is users load profile image event. So all that needs is the ID, right? So if we go to a user over here that uh, the app hasn't loaded yet, it's going to fetch that download link and put it into state. And the way that we're using that 
in the screen itself is in this spot right here. So this is a list view of our body of the screen. It's got some padding on this circular image here. And this is the new component uh, that I've made, circular network image, excuse me, and it needs a URL. So let's go uh, into there. So we're just passing it the URL from our state, and this could be null. So we go into here and it, it accepts a null URL. And if it has the URL as null, it shows you the empty state kind of image. And also I put a size here just so it uh, could be reused in other spots if we wanted a list out with like a leading with a smaller one or something like that. So to clip a network image, it's a bit weird. You need a container and align it in the center. So the, the image is actually the full width of the screen and we've just aligned it in the center. And then we put a clip oval to clip the image. Um, the circle avatar is got the background color. And um, since it's a radius, it's size over two. Let me put this builder here so that if the URL is null, is not null, we go image.network, we pass in the URL, we cover the entire available space so that there's no weird corners. Like if it was a square image and part of the circle was visible, that would look kind of dumb and make it the full size. And if the URL is null, we get that icon with the person uh, for the empty state. Um, so yeah, how about we just did upload an image and trace through that event through the entire app. So just put it all together. So let's go back to our screen, user profile screen. Okay, so let's go right here. So let's get a new photo. There's our dog. So here we're going to dispatch the event with the file. So that's the user change profile image event. So that's going to go to our block. Actually, sorry, it's not going to go there. It's going to go into change profile image. So if we hit continue, we are now going to admit that we're loading. Then eventually we are going to upload the file. So we hit upload. We go to the next one. We go back to Firebase and we see that the third one now has got it uploaded. We get our download URL and our download URL is right here. So if we I think if we actually just go to there, it should show us the image as well. Yeah, there's our dog. Then we admit that that all worked. And once we admit that that all worked, our screen is going to rebuild and we are going to get a URL here. So now this circular network image, it has a URL and what it's going to do is then fetch that and display it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on cloud storage with the file system and network image.